Hello everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Humanism podcast. In today's episode, I will be discussing why the Sony Wars happening at the moment. Okay, so the reason why there have been so many recent conflicts having happened over the past few years, with so with not as many wars happening previously over the last few decades compared to recently, and the total number of conflicts are currently ongoing amount up to 133 conflicts. Information on these conflicts and wars is provided by the Armed Conflict Survey 2023. Uh, you can get that survey on Amazon for about £400 on Kindle and £4,050 uh, in paperback, so it's, it's pretty expensive. And that report was produced by the International Institution for Strategic Studies which is available to purchase again on Amazon. So why so many wars happening can be divided into five reasons of these conflicts. They're in no particular order concerning the relevance of territorial disputes, the rise of organized crime, non-state groups, including terrorists, and climate change. Climate change is also a leading factor in the Arab Spring of 2010 to 2013, and the reasons for ongoing conflicts within the Middle East for example, the Syrian war security in 2006 contributed to the looming civil war, which happened in uh, 2011. Uh, several droughts devastated many rural areas, causing famine and migrating peoples to cities for new opportunities and better living conditions. Instead, they were met with unemployment, poverty, fueling the many grievances against the central government. Finally, we also have the rise of authoritarian regimes who often try to stay in power by seeking foreign wars to distract the public. This kind of tactic is nothing new, used by kings, emperors and dictators throughout human history. For instance, Henry V of England, who reigned from 1413 to 1422, was England's second Lancastrian king and of the Knet House of the main Plantagenet dynasty, which was overthrown in 1399 by Henry IV, father of Henry V, and England's first Lancastrian king, who ruled from 1399 until his death in 1413. In response to this crisis caused by his father usurping the throne from King Richard II of England, who ruled from 1377 to 1399, Henry V restarted the Hundred Years' War and successfully conquered northern France to distract and to prevent a civil war within the English kingdom. The Hundred Years' War itself is part of a series of conflicts between the Kingdom of England and France, stretching back even before the Norman Conquest in 1066. The Hundred Years' War itself, lasting from 1337 to 1453. Uh, the Civil War, known as the Wars of the Roses, from 1455 to 18 to 1487, was successfully delayed due to Henry V's actions. This historical example is nothing new. It has happened before and it will happen again. Okay, now we'll talk about territorial disputes and why they contribute to the rise of conflict. Uh, territorial disputes are often one of the most common forms of conflicts. We have seen recent examples of this, such as the Ukraine Russian War, which has been an ongoing conflict over territory since February 2022 between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. There is also the Palestinian Israeli conflict, which has been ongoing since the founding of Israel in 1948. And there also is the current Israel Hamas war, which started on the 7th of October 2023. Other terror disputes are also happening between India and Pakistan over Kashmir. India claims entire, entirely elsewhere the mission. India claims that entire erstwhile British Indian principal state. Jasmine, Jas, J A M M N U, a Kashmir based on the instrument of accession signed in 1947. I do apologize for that, it just, we did a name, it's hard to actually pronounce because I don't want to speak English. Uh, Pakistan claims most of the region based on its Muslim majority population, where China claims large, large, uninhabited regions of Askichin and the Shaksam Valley. Uh, I will leave a link to this article based on this podcast in the comment section so you can read it yourself as well. Uh, the title is the same name of the podcast. 
I'm just going to meet my medium, tap the tackle in straight away. And I'm going to be on my link and go on my page as well. So it should be easy to find. Okay. In the far east, there's also territorial disputes over the sovereignty of Taiwan, which mainland China has viewed as a breakaway province since the Chinese Civil War, which lasted from 1927 to 1949, ended with communist victory in 1949. Finally, the Wendy Ways and Gyanan territorial dispute over Esquator region originate, originated before Gyanian independence with conflict with Esquabida. That's E S S E Q U K B O. The 1899 aberration set by Esquabida River at the Ghana Western border. But the Ghanaian post independence in 1966 contested the ruler and asserted ownership over. E S S E Q U I B O. Territorial disputes between the nations by their very nature and incredibly hard to resolve without resorting to full blown interstate conflict. Uh, the Ukraine conflict in 2014, uh, until the Russian invasion of Ukraine directly, was also a territorial dispute over control of the Krev Nizla and the Republic of Donbass, was the Ukrainian government viewed as breakaway promises from Greater Ukraine. Uh, this conflict, which has been unable to be resolved, led by a full-blown interstate war between Ukraine and the Russian Federation. The Ukraine were also elements of a proxy war with the United States of America and other European nations supplying Ukrainians with money and military equipment. Territorial disputes also have a way of leading to broader, much longer wars, such as July 28, 1914, one month to the day after Serbian nationalists uh, that's S A R A G E V O, killed East Duke Franz Ferdinand, Austria, and his wife. This led to the Austrian Hungary to declare war, effectively beginning the First World War. From 1914 until the succession of armed conflict began in 1918, and the war officially ended in 1919. Now, in present time, there is the Hamas Israeli war, which is damaging Israeli relations. Arab states of Jordan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the Arab state of Yemen. Houthi terrorists within Yemen were also targeting international shipping lanes in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Uh, international shipping is being targeted could pull the United States of America, the British, French, China, and other states into a growing conflict if it expands. These nations, particularly China, depend on secure oil supply from the Middle East for domestic consumption. Territorial disputes are becoming more and more common, particularly due to United Nations not having relevant funding to use UN peacekeepers to protect and maintain the peace in potential combat zones. The second reason is the United States of America and other North Atlantic Treaty Organization have an experience with the war in Afghanistan from 2001 to 2021. Uh, the public believes, well, the US public believes, the US should not interfere and it should not be in its interest to be the world's policeman intervening in to maintain global peace. According to the geopolitical analyst Peter Zeihan, there, had, there would at least be another decade, if not two, before the United States of America would be willing to intervene in other nations on the same scale during the war on terror. Uh, the final the point is with the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, the current political norms is the 1990 that state that due to and states do not use military force to change borders has been altered by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russian invasion of Ukraine also signals to large nations, such so as China, India, and other continental nations, or other nations, that they have a significant, if they have significant resources, they can engage in military actions without consequences from the international community. The remain to peace and security nations that wish to maintain the international framework created since the end of World War II must use diplomatic leverage, economic sanctions, and even military force to maintain the peace. With the United States of America and its allies no longer able or willing to do this, we're seeing more conflicts like the Ukraine war between more regular occurrences. Now I'm going to talk about authoritarianism. Uh, over the last 20 years, the world has, been, has experienced a democratic depression, with the rise of year after year of new dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, which create the chance of wars being used as a means to change the global status quo, 
as well as pursue their own national objectives. Authoritarianism is defined as a political system characteristic by rejection of democracy and political plurality. It involves using strong central power to prevent the political status quo, to maintain the political status quo, and the reduction in the rule of law, separation of powers, and democratic voting. The historical norm before 1945 was for nations with strong militaries to pursue their economic territorial goals through the use of military force. That's why the English became so successful and built its empire for national defence with other continental powers, particularly the French. Uh, Post World War II, particularly environment, was possible due to military action of the states provided by the United States of America. Nations that previously could not industrialize could now achieve their political and economic objectives without using military force. Uh, the United States allowed nation states to export goods and services from around the globe without interstate rivalries. Hence, why European nations and other nations around the globe were part and continue to be a part of the United States American security agreements, which is their militaries and their defense spending as well. With the decline of democracies continuing less than five percent, with the continued decline of democracies continuing less than five percent of global population will live in a functioning democracy by the year 2026, according to the Westminster Foundation for Democracy. Next part is going to be organized crime. Uh, in in the 2023 organized crime index has scored that 83 percent of the global population lives in nations with very very high crime rates. This is compared to 72 percent in 2021, a marked increase of over 10 percent in international crime rate. And criminal organizations overtake advantage of the weak governments so that they don't have power to enforce law, which increases the chances of, of those nations becoming fell states. For the United States of America, it's a um, Fentanyl, fentanyl crisis is partly caused by Sinola and the C CJNG cartels, which are Mexican's most powerful drug empires. They specialize in manufacturing and deliberating illegal drugs, human trafficking, smuggling weapons across the US border. These two cartels are responsible for the vast majority of fentanyl flooding US communities. Over 150 people die every day from overdose related to significant opioids like fentanyl. This means that there is a total of 54,750 deaths in the United States related to fentanyl. Fentanyl is also bringing down the United States average life expectancy as well. The drug itself is highly addictive and often placed in other drug products that are disguised either as other illegal drugs or normal drugs which people take, which is fentanyl. It's an addictive substance and they're taking it without realizing it because it could be disguised as a normal painkiller drug with the people are actually having fentanyl. Now I'll be discussing uh, armed non-state groups. Armed non-state groups includes military, paramilitary organizations but not linked to the state or plausible deniability such as the Wagner Group. We're in the initial phase of the Ukraine war from the 14th of February 2022. The Wagner Group uh, Trends reached troops reached 20,000 to 50,000 soldiers. They primarily took part in the main assault during the Battle of Bakhmut. Wagner also supported regimes friendly with Putin and Russia, including the in the Russian in the Serbian Civil War, uh, Libya, uh, Central African Republic, and Mali. Then there was the brief Wagner Rebellion in June 2023 between the 23rd and 24th of June. During the brief rebellion, according to media sources, Wagner took control of military facilities in cities. Wagner proceeded to into Lipsk, Obsplast, approximately 400 kilometers from Moscow, or 250 miles. Uh, Militaries and other non-military groups are also active in sub-Saharan Africa, with a whopping 48% the rise of vitalities caused by non-government funded military organizations increasing instability within the region. Uh, part of national sovereignty is having a nation-wide monopoly in the use of military force. Suppose an Asian state is overrun and dominated by non-military forces within that state and not loyal to the government. In that case, it increases the chance of civil war and other conflicts. It also undermines the credibility of any national government not having control of the application of military force. It makes it uh, 
and plus uh, increasingly unstable that nation. Uh, these issues, particularly in the modern Western post industrial nation, can often seen archaic. And we may be wondering why governments don't outlaw the practice. That's again, it's simple. The, the central governments lack overall authority or military strength to implement these kinds of laws. Doing so most likely lead these nations into civil war. In nations like the United Kingdom, many issues over parliamentary organizations, non governmental organizations, and the legitimate use of violence were solved in the 16th century. Uh, the matter of religious persecution, religious wars in wider Europe was also resolved in the 17th to 16th centuries, respectively. Uh, many of the laws, customs that govern our societies for people living in Western Europe, the United States of America, and other English speaking nations have been made if we take for granted. Many issues facing the Middle East and other places around the globe were resolved centuries ago in, in our countries. For England, Parliament passed the Act of Delivery in 1503. This banned the keeping of private armies and this removed the threat of rebellion within the Kingdom of England. And that was uh, over, five, over five centuries ago, nearly 16, 600 years. Now, I'm going to, finally, I'm going to talk about the climate crisis. Three decades ago, in 1990, 44% of conflicts happening in climate vulnerable countries, that figure is now 67% as of 2022. Uh, the random genocide, also known as the genocide against the Tutsi, occurred between the 7th of April and 15th of July in 1994. During this period of 100 days, around about 100 days, members of the Tutsi minority ethnic group, as well as some moderate Hutu and Tawa, were killed by armed Hutu militants. Over 800,000 Tutsi were murdered with the use of over 500,000 machetes and other objects such as clubs. The reason for this civil war are multiple and largely legacy of colonialism where the Belgians and Germans rules to rule Rwanda. Both of these former colonial powers used ethnic divisions and not accurately created ethnic divisions between the Tutsi and the Hutu, thereby fostering ethnic tension between both ethnic groups. However, due to intermarrying both groups being in the region for at least since the 11th century, if not earlier during the 5th century, they are in fact very closely related genetically. Also during the colonial period, the Tutsi minority were given positions of power to help the colonial powers maintain control over Rwanda. This great hatred and rivalry between the Hutu and the Tutsi over government control and administration when Rwanda gained independence on the 1st of July 1962. Since 1962, the Tutsi and the Hutu have engaged in ethnic conflict. Ultimately, in 1994, the Tutsi won the Rwanda Civil War from 1990 to 1994. The Tutsi that fled Rwanda during the conflict, approximately 700,000 returned to Rwanda from neighboring nations from exile. Uh, Parts of the Rwandan genocide itself, according to the author, writer, and geologist Gerard Diamond, was caused by pure soil quality, that is poor soil quality due to inadequate resource management, overpopulation and the nature of the Rwanda economy in the 1990s. Rwanda's economy is approximately 94% of its people working in the farming sector, in agriculture. Therefore, to be a successful, Rwandans must have their land and the ability to feed themselves and their families with their own plots of land. Poor soil quality and lack of available land meant that Rwandan genocide was also taking place due to people wanting from others. It wasn't just the Tutsi that were massacred, but also wealthy Hutus, or people who just had more than their neighbours. A recent report from the Institute for Economic Peace released a report of the Ecological Threat Report 2023, which reports that they have found links between the effects of climate change and increase of warfare in 2023, and which will also be occurring in 2024. Food insecurity increased the chance of conflict by 36%, natural hazard exposure and the chance of conflict by 21%. Lack of access to clean water increased the chance of conflict by 18%. We are already seen conflicts such as the Syrian Civil War, which started on the 15th of March 2011, and still an ongoing conflict partly caused by economic inequality within the nation, as well as water insecurity. I hope everybody enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for listening. Please take care. Um, yeah. Thank you.